Hi, welcome to a special live edition of MacMost. In this episode, I'm going to go through and create a newsletter in Mac Pages. First, I want to thank all of my great Patreon supporters. You can go to MacMost.com slash Patreon and there you can learn more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So the idea with this live episode is I'm going to go and create a newsletter in Pages. I'm going to use Page Layout Mode and create something from scratch, not using one of the templates. And the idea is you can get a look at how Page Layout Mode works. We can look at a bunch of different features and how you can create something like this which could be a PDF that you distribute or maybe something that you print out. Along the way I'll be checking the comments and chat here uh, to see if anybody has any questions about what I'm doing. So let's take a look at Pages here. I'm going to start a new document here in Pages and I'm just going to choose a basic blank template. Now I'm going to expand this here to fill the whole screen so we can concentrate just on it and then I'm going to go and change this to page layout mode. So this is probably the single most important thing that you need to do the entire time uh, is that this is in word processing mode which means we have this big you know, box here where we can insert text into and write page after page of stuff like we're writing a novel or a report or something like that. But we need to get rid of that and change to payout layout page layout mode. So actually if I go to view and I show layout you could see that box here as well as the header and at the bottom here the footer. Let's go and zoom out like 50% there and we could see exactly what it is I'm talking about. And if I were to keep typing it would just keep expanding this box through all the pages. But let's switch to page layout mode so we're using this like a page layout program. To do that you can go to File and then Convert to Page Layout. There are other ways to do it as well but let's just use that one. And now when I convert you can see that box is gone. I still have the headers and footers there and I'm here in the sidebar here under Format and I've got nothing selected so it's just Format for the page and I've got Show Headers and Footers. I don't need headers and footers here. I'm going to get rid of those so I'm going to uncheck that box. So now I have a blank page that I could work with. Let's do some other things here. First I want to see the sidebar here. I'm going to choose View and then Page Thumbnails and I can see I have one page here. We're going to do a two page newsletter but it could be more than that. So uh, we'll just have this one page to start with. Also I'm going to do View Show Rulers so we can see the rulers here. And let's add some rulers here because I don't want to get too close to the margins while creating this. Maybe my printer doesn't go close to the margins when printing but also uh, it might look better if there's a little white space around it. So let's go and uh, do that. Uh, I'm going to drag from the left margin here in and drop a ruler or guide right at 0.5. It'll work a little bit better if I zoom in a bit more. Now I can do it from the top and I can do one on the right. I have to drag from the left ruler all the way to the right. I'll do one at there. Now I'm going to stop right here because actually this is a mistake a lot of people make. I'm going to drag these back off. If we did it like that it would only appear on page 1. I want this, these guides to appear on all the pages. So I'm going to go to let's see, View and Edit Master Pages. So when I edit Master Pages I don't have any Master Pages. These are like page templates. So I just have a blank page template here. I could create more page templates but what I'm going to do is edit this master page and I'm going to put the rulers here. And The difference is is that now they'll appear in any page where I use this template. So let's put those back where I had them before. It's a bit hard to get it perfect. I'd probably be better if I zoomed in a little bit more. And now I have margins at half an inch from the edge of every page. Now I'm going to hit Done here to exit that. Now you can see I still see those here. I can't grab them anymore because they're on the the page like they're on the uh, template or section master. It's called. But the cool thing is now if I create a new page, 
So if I do insert page and I create a second page you can see I've got on both pages those same guides. Here on the second page I've got the headers and footers. I can get rid of that easily enough. So now I've got two pages here. Let's go and create something here like uh, you know something at the top that's like the banner for this newsletter. So I'm going to use some shapes here. Let's uh, do a rounded rectangle and put like a rounded rectangle across the top there like that. And I'm going to put some text in it. Let's change the color to uh, something a little, you know, I don't know, a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to click on the color wheel here and I've got the color chooser. Um, let's adjust the wheel there and choose some sort of like tannish color for now. I'm going to adjust it a little bit better later on. Something like that for now. Just to get an idea. Uh, and then I want to put some words in here. So let's do that. I'm going to click here to create a text box and I'm going to uh, put some text in here for the title of this newsletter. So now I've got that. Uh, we obviously need to make that text a lot bigger. So I'll go to Format, Text here and increase the size. Let's move it over. Something like that. Uh, now let's make it a better font here. So I want to use a font uh, that's a nice looking uh, title font for this. Um, actually let's bring a new font in. That would be something else I could show here. Uh, I actually have a another font in mind. Let's launch font book and I've got a file here that contains Cooper Black Standard um, and I can drag it into font book here. And it should add it. Okay. So now I should see it appear here. I'll select all of this text here. And I will go to font and Cooper Standard appears there. And remember the old days when you would have to maybe you know restart pages or maybe even reboot your Mac or something like that after you added fonts. Uh, it's much easier now. So I've got this here. I've got some text. Um, that's cool. Let's get a graphic in here. I actually have a graphic. Let's see if I can find it. I'm just uh, on another screen here looking at the finder right now. Yeah, I've got this little clip art here. So I can move this clip art in here and add it to the banner there. Something like that. Now, of course, if you're creating a regular newsletter, this is something you only have to do the first time. And then you can copy and paste from old newsletters or start, you know, grab an old newsletter and then make a copy of it and edit it. So I've got this here. Let's adjust under format image. Um, let's adjust the exposure. Let's make it brighter. I like the idea of making it brighter. Make it more saturated, less saturated. You know, we can play with everything in that image like that. And let's adjust this a bit. Notice how you know it's snapping to things. I could turn snapping off, but I could also just hold the command key, or I think it, no, you have, oh, the option key actually duplicates it. But the command key, if you hold the command key down when you move things, it's not going to snap. So it makes it much easier to adjust. So we can do that. Now let's color this text in here something a little nicer. Um, and what I'm going to do is I want to pick out. You know, I've got this clip art here that I can't really change the colors, and, and they're basically the colors I want. So let's grab colors from this to use uh, in the text. So with this text selected here, I could go to Text Color, click on the wheel there, and then I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. And now I can select maybe a light color here to grab that. Now that doesn't look good with the background color. So let's go and uh, you know work with that. I should note I'm not a graphic designer, and um, it's really outs, you know uh, not something I do. So you know what I'm going to create here isn't going to be great. It's just going to be uh, something that you can use and build on with your own design. So let's click on the color there and choose something maybe a darker color for the background. Maybe something more towards gray, but maybe with a touch of the uh, 
touch of beige or something like that. Something like that could be okay. Now let's go and create a subtitle here. And that's like the subtitle for our newsletter. I will go and increase that size as well. Fits underneath there nicely. Uh, let's make it bold. And I, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use three different fonts here. One font is going to be you know just for the title, and one is going to be for things that are big and bold like titles and headlines and stuff. And I'm gonna use that here. Let's just uh, stick with Helvetica, but I'll make it uh, bold like that. But let's add a color for it. Um, click here for colors. Click here, and maybe let's grab something else from. The wombat image. Oh, I forgot to select the text. Okay, click there. I still didn't do it. It's uh, sometimes you have to close that, open it again. There we go. Now we are changing that. Let's grab something else from the body of the wombat, like that. So it's a slightly different color than what we had before. And let's shrink that up here. So something like that for our, you know, banner across the top. So uh, again, it's a question: just Pages an app? Pages is an app that uh, you get it from the Mac App Store, uh, or if it didn't already come installed on your Mac, it's free. It's from Apple. It's the main word processor and also page layout tool that you can use on your Mac for free. Uh, works really great. Uh, not only is it available for Mac, but it's available for iOS and iPad OS as well. So. Uh, let's go and do some lines here. So I'm going to create a line. It's just a black line, two pixels. I'm going to put it here at the top like that. Um, let's maybe make it three pixels like that. Uh, let's create another one. I'm just going to option drag to create a copy of it and put it below. You know, I'm going to select all of this. Since I'm kind of finished with the banner, I'm going to select the four elements of the banner there. And then I'm going to go to Arrange and Group to group them together. So that will prevent me from accidentally editing or moving them around. But also I can move them as a group. I'm going to use the up arrow key to move it up a little bit. And then I'm going to select this line here. Move that up so it's about the same distance like that. And then I'm going to Option Drag and create another copy of this line there. And now I can put some stuff in here. So usually there's like stuff you need to include at the top, you know, like the date. So um, we can say like March 2020 is the date for this newsletter, or 2021 would make more sense. You know, we're getting ahead. We're getting ready for a future newsletter. Uh, let's make it bold, like we said we were going to use for any kind of title text there, and adjust the line, get it in there really nice. It's not all the way to the left. And that's because uh, format under arrange. I don't remember where it is now that um, there's the text inset for this text box. So there's somewhere, let's see, layout, text, layout, inset, zero. So now it will be flushed left, but I have to kind of move it down a little bit to put it there. Let's option drag and put a copy, oops, sorry, option drag, there we go, and put a copy over here on the right, and this. It could be like issue number 17. And then um, I'm going to select that, go to Style, and Write Justify it. There we go. Let's do one in the center here. And I'll actually uh, center that, make it a little larger, drag it into the middle. And then here's where I can put something like, you know, um, a, uh, let's see, the world's leading source of wombat news. Got to make it a little bit larger, recenter it. I can check to see if these are all aligned. I could select all three of these, so I'm going to use Shift, click, 
to select all three of these. Then go to Arrange, Align Objects, and I'll align their middles. So now that they are all aligned, and how do they look compared to the lines above and below? And I could select it here and say Arrange. And I could see the position here. So Y position is 2.36, 2.36. 2.36. So they all are aligned uh, nicely there. Oh, another thing I wanted to do um, is I wanted to show you in here. Let me double click in this group so now I can select items inside the group. And this text here, I wanted to go in and uh, set it under here, under Advanced Settings, to it's just under my picture there. See, it says Capitalization. And I'm going to change that. You can't see that. I apologize. Uh, to All Caps. And then the cool thing it does is it makes it all caps, but the letters, it still knows which are uppercase and lowercase. So you can always revert back. I'm going to select all there and shrink it down so now it fits. Now that those letters are all caps. Something like that. So there we go. Maybe it looked better when it was uh, what it was before. Let me undo a bunch of times. Yeah, I like it better that way. All right. So now let's actually add content to the newsletter. Uh, to do that, we're just going to create more text boxes and things. So we're going to create a text box here for headline. And let's put the first headline in. And remember, we're using Helvetica New Bold for things like this. Let's make it bigger. But, you know, I want this to be. Basically, covering you know maybe two thirds or three quarters, and then I'm going to put here. Oh, sorry, I did not mean to do that. I meant to click shape and put a new line here, and create something where it's like a divider, like that, with a little space here at the top and the bottom, um, and then there'll be other items in here. So this headline here, I can continue to expand. Let's go to Layout and get rid of the text inset. And I can expand this until it kind of fills that space. There's our headline. Yeah, just like that. Let's shrink it down. There's the headline. Now let's create the body text. The body text will appear underneath here. And we can do several things. We can have it be one column and then add another text box for another column. Or we could have two columns. So Let's do that. Let's do a cross like this for the entire thing. Um, and then I'm going to paste in some sample text here. I have an app you get from the Mac App Store. I think it's free. It might be a few dollars called Little Ipsum, which just allows me to grab Ipsum text, which is sample text. It's just, you know, fake text that looks a little bit like Latin. And paste it in there. One of the things I hate about it, though, is it gives me these empty paragraphs there. Um, so I've got this. Let me copy and paste that there. That's like placeholder text for the article. Maybe I'm waiting for the journalist to write the article and provide it to me. Now, we've got this here. Let's first set the font. Now, for reading, usually you have a different font than you have for like a headline. So for a headline here, I've got this nice sans serif font, Helvetica New. But for reading, I want to have a serif font. Um, and I'm going to be really boring about it and choose times. But you know, you could choose one you like. Make it a little bit bigger, like 12 point times. Um, so now that's our reading text. But let's go to Layout and make it two columns. So now we've got two columns there. In addition to that, we can also make it justified. Uh, so we go to Style, Text Style. Get rid of this. Text Style. And then we can go um, here under the Instead of left justified, right justified, we do justified or you know both sides justified. And now we have it justified on both sides. We could change the gutter size there. It's a little bit big, isn't it? Between those, the default gutter size. So let's change it to like 0.2. There we go. Now a little less gutter there between them. So now we've got an article there. But let's go and do some extra things. Um, I'm going to make it, let's let's pretend that this first sentence here is kind of uh, the summary of the article. And you see this a lot uh, in newsletters, sometimes in newspapers. Uh, let's change the style here of this first paragraph, uh, text style. Let's change it again so the capitalization, now you can actually see it because I moved things up. 
Let's change it to um, all caps. So again it knows which is uppercase and which is lowercase and I could switch back to none. So much better than actually typing it out as all caps. Uh, all caps and then an extra space here. Sometimes you see that. Sometimes this is even bigger. Uh, let's go and do the style. I'll scroll back down, make this one, maybe two points bigger. So there's your little like summary of what's going on. And then here's the article and it wraps through these columns. Let's add an image. That's the next obvious thing that I want to add. How do you superimpose letters in front of a graphic? Well, I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. Let's get a wombat picture and place it where we need. There we go. So I'm going to drag this image in. Now I don't want to drag it into the text box. I want to drag it somewhere where there's nothing. And I could even drag it off to the side here. I'll just put it right here. So now it's an independent image. And we could shrink it down. We want to fit it right here. So we can crop some of this out. I'm going to double click on it and now I can zoom in but I could also crop the edges and you could see that this part is not going to be included and neither is this part. So we can get it down to something a little bit nicer. And it's done. And now we can put that in here. I can stretch it a bit so it's kind of the width of this column. Now notice how the text is underneath it. So what I want to do is I want to make sure the text wraps. So I'm going to go to Arrange with this image here and see text wrapping is none. I'm going to set it to Automatic. Now it's going to push text away from the edges including that headline. So with Automatic let's change the spacing here to be something less. So we can go down to nothing here or we can just go down to like a little bit. Maybe four point. I mean, I won't use the arrow keys to move it down a little bit. And then there's still four point underneath right there. So I've got my image in place. If I wanted to add a border, I go to Style and add a line border like that. Maybe one point border around it like that. I could do a caption a couple different ways. One is I could go to uh, let's see Format Style. Oh, okay, underneath here. Let's see if I can get me out of the way. There we go. We can see title and caption. So I can turn that on. You can see title at the top or caption at the bottom. So I'll just leave the caption there at the bottom. I could also have gone and created a separate text box and just put it there. So um, Wombat Astronaut. There we go. So we've got that there. Now obviously you know, you can see it continues uh, from this article. We're going to continue on on page two. So I'll get to that in a little bit. Now somebody asked about uh, superimposed letters in front of a graphic. All I would do to do that is uh, create a new text box and stick it on top and you know put a letter there. Let's uh, increase the size. Easy as you as you like. Um, we can make that bold. We can uh, change the text color and make it semi-transparent. Oh, I have to select the text. Let's see here. There we go. Make it semi-transparent. Now you can see that W is kind of behind it. So hope that answers your question and gives you some ideas to build off of. Um, now let's go and create some more stuff. Let's uh, put some things here on the side. Create another piece of text. This will be like a little headline, like for a tiny article here. Um, something uh, to add written down some ideas for things. Uh, let's see. Something like that. Bold. Uh, increase. I'm going to do command and then the equals plus equals button to increase the text there. And then maybe uh, another some article text here and we'll change this to our article text. Um, I think this is a good time maybe to talk about uh, actually um, using styles because I think that's really important for this. So let's select, I'm just going to select a little bit of text, sample text here. Paste it in. There we go. Now you can see this is not times. And you can see I had to manually set this font here. What if I uh, didn't have to do that? So let's go in here to this piece of text. 
I'm going to select it all. And you can see it's body text asterisk, meaning that it's body text but altered, right? So I'm going to use this as a title for every uh, every, you know, every headline I use. So let's go and click here and I'm going to create a new paragraph style. I want to call it article headline like that. Now all I need to do is I can select this and say, oh yeah, this is supposed to be article headline. Now it's going to use the same font size. So the font's going to be way too big. So I'll just adjust it, which I'll have to do for headlines all the time. Now for this text here, this body text, let's select that and let's say that I, I could just say, you know, all body text should be this. I could just update. Uh, but instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new paragraph style and call it article body. And then, you know, I, what I should have done is actually selected all of this. I'm going to select, um, well, I've set a special thing up here. Let's go and uh, do that too. So we'll add a new paragraph style. We'll call this uh, article summary. Okay. Now, if I select all of this, Command A, and then I say this is going to be article body. You can see it changes to article body. Let's change this to article summary. You can see it even remembers to do it in all caps. Now let's go here and let's change this to article body as well. So now you can see how nicely it was to apply that. Now if I ever wanted to change article body, like I say, oh wait a minute, I made a mistake. Article body should not be uh, 12 point, it should be 13 point. Then I could, you know, with this selected here, I could update it and you could see it updated article body everywhere. I'm going to undo those two. So um, it's useful to have those. But now it's great because now I can go and create a new uh, piece of, you know, something new. Probably the best thing to do here would be to option drag. I'm going to shift click to select both of these, option drag, and I've created a second copy of it and you know I could do you know something else and you know some more article text there. And of course I'm rushing through this because I'm doing a live episode here. So um, you know I would be more careful about like exactly how these are aligned. I would go and say 200 percent and I'd go in here and I'd say oh, let me get this right there. Get this right there. Maybe I want this to be a little bit over. Let's match these. Maybe I go in and I let's lay out and it's no text inset here for these. Like that. So it goes to the edge there. Remember, I still have the half inch margin, so that's fine. Um, so maybe this goes in a little bit more. You know, and then I'll do the same adjustments for here. You know, let's get rid of the text inset. And let's align this a little bit better there with the left side of that. Let's align this. Let's move this up. Maybe shift select to select both of these. You know, get them the appropriate height. You know, really work with these things to just get it looking just perfect. So let's go back to uh, 75%. I can do fit page. There we go. So now it's about the page size. Now we have this page 2 down here. I can jump around like that or I can scroll and I can see page 2. This article is going to continue on page 2. But first let's uh, do something for page 2 here. Let me look at see if anybody has some questions. Uh, no questions right now. How does, let's see. Let's just go and create something new here. I'm going to you know, copy and paste headline here to make it easier. Why well, start from scratch if you don't have to. Let's go here and uh, under style make this bigger. Oh actually let's, let's first put the real headline here. Um, let's see. Uh, and Shrink that down. Get that like that. Um, I could uh, copy and paste the text box, but I'll just create a new one here. And let's say this is going to go all the way across. 
and let me select the sample text. Or I could do some new sample text. How about that? Uh, I'm going to go to little ipsum, grab that, paste it in, oh, get rid of all of that, those extra spaces, copy and paste another copy of it. Make it easy. Now let's set this up as three columns. All right, and the gutters way too much. So set those a little less there. Style, I'll justify the style of it. Select it again. Justify. There we go. Um, let's do an image here. I have another image. There we go. Again, I don't want to drag it in here. I want to drag it separately. So there is an image I will use. Put that the width of two columns across. Um, so I'll click on it and let's crop a little bit off the bottom there. We can even zoom in a bit. Something like that. And then um, I can go to uh, Arrange, Text Wrap, Automatic, and let's set the spacing down to something less. I'm going to use the arrow keys to move it down a bit so it doesn't interfere with the headline there. You know, and there's the second article. Let's do a line here. Then let's maybe continue the article from the front page. We could do all sorts of uh, different things here, like um, you know, let's sometimes it's good to have a subheadline. So I can select Shift Select both of these, move these down, move these down as well. I'm going to copy and paste this, but this one I'm going to uh, change the size, make it much smaller. Use the arrow keys, move it down a bit. Uh, shrink it down so it fits. Maybe center. There we go. I could even maybe make that a different color. I'm just going to choose a, a dark gray there. You know, so that's an example of how you would do that. Move that down a little bit here. Now let's continue the article from the previous page here. This one in the space down below but maybe just on two columns there. So I'll create a new text box. I'll put it here. I'll have it go to you know, match kind of the column here on the left. Um, now let's to link these two. I click on this first box here, and then you see this dot here at the top. I click on that, and it says one. Then I go down here and I click on this text box, and then I click on the dot there. And now that says two, and the text is now flowing from here to here. We still have to go and make this two columns, and let's set a custom gutter again like that. And now we have to also give the reader something to see um, so they know where to go. So let's create a text box here and I'm going to move it down. I got really just a one line little thing. And I'm going to say in this um, you know, continued on page 2 or on next page. And I'm going to select it all. Uh, let's go to uh, the text style. Uh, make it bold. Make it right justified like that. Um, I could set this up as a regular style. If I'm going to be doing this a lot, so I can go here, click here, and then say uh, continued on. And then I'm going to in this text box here go to layout. Um, or I'm sorry, go to arrange and text wrap automatic. And set the spacing down to almost nothing. There. Now I want to put this at the bottom here. Now one of the things we're seeing is you know you can see there's a blank space here and this kind of ends early too. If I select this text, I'm going to do Command A to select all. Under More, Format Text More, 
there's prevent widow and orphan lines which basically says hey a new paragraph starts here. Don't start the new paragraph there. Start the new paragraph at the next line. But for this I'm not going to do that. So I uncheck that and now you can see it starts the new paragraph there and no problem starting the new paragraph there even though it's continued on the next page. I'm going to move this down just enough so one more line appears. There it goes like that. And then down here I want to have an indicator this is where it's continued from. So I could copy and paste this or I create a new text box. Stick it here. Make it small. Say continued from previous page. You know, sometimes the stylist actually give it something like C uh, space on page 2. And then this one will say, you know, space continuing from page 1 or something like that. I'm going to go to style and then choose the continued on style for this. Uh, but this time I'm going to make it left justified. So a little variation there. Layout uh, and Oh, sorry. I uh, see. I always go to the wrong menus, but it's really quick to say, "Oh, no, that's not where I want to go. Here's where I want to go." So, if you do the same thing, I do the same thing. It's no big deal. Um automatic no extra spacing. And we could get it down in here and it's actually there's not enough room for continue next page. There it goes. That's fine. So, I've got that. Get out another line. Just to divide things up, you know, and put some extra information here, you know, perhaps another little bit like this. Just paste that, move that down here. But now I've got some more space for it, so this will be a little wider, like that. And there could be some extra information there at the bottom. But that kind of gives you a, an example of uh, of pretty much everything. I think that uh, you might want to include uh, here in you know a standard kind of newsletter. You could certainly include uh, extra elements, you know, there's this huge library of shapes in here with all sorts of things. You know, so we can go to nature and you know go to a kind of a leaf there. You know, I'm going to uh, let's see. It's uh, command drag the corner there to rotate it. You know, I set the color. So I'll click there again, use the eyedropper tool, and grab the same color, say, from the uh, title text here. There. So, and maybe I could make the lines. You know, it would be nice if I made these lines that color as well, or at least the color of this. So, uh, you know, put something like that there, and then I'm going to select both of those. There we go. Option. Option drag. There we go. You know, to color it up, I could put more lines above or below that. Um, all sorts of things that you could do to create newsletters. Now, when it's done, uh, one of the things you can do is if you don't want to see those rulers anymore, you know, you kind of you got everything laid out. You can go to View and let's see, uh, hide rulers. Oh, that's uh, hide rulers. But then we want also. Hide layout? No. Um, I'm trying to remember how to get rid of the guides. I think there's a way. Rulers. Let's see, guides, uh, show guides. No. I could certainly make them just white or something like that. I, I thought there is a way. But, um, you know, if I go to Print. Well, actually, what I'm going to want to do is go export PDF, and that'll allow me to export this uh, as a PDF. I probably want to set image quality to best if I'm distributing this as a PDF or printing it, um, unless file size is uh, you know something I'm worried about. Then I might want to go to good, um, and then you can uh, export that as a PDF. You can also, if you go to print, you can see what this looks like here. So you can see here is a nice little preview of it. Um, you can preview both pages of it. I should probably add some adding a line there at the top and a line there at the bottom might be really good. Maybe even adding 
two lines at the top with some text like this text here, the same text on the second page. That might be good too. Um, anyway, you can print from here, but you could also save as a PDF. So you know, I could go and uh, save as PDF from here, but uh, you know, probably exactly the same result if you do export to PDF here uh, to get it. And then uh, you've got your basic your basic newsletter layout there. Uh, let me see if there are any questions. Let's see. Um, how to use a pointer or a pen in Keynote while presenting the PowerPoint? I don't understand that question. Um, are the layout you create for just for this document or if you create a new document, are they available or save as a template? Yes. So the way I would do this, let's save this. I'm going to save it here. I'm just going to uh, temporarily just save it to the desktop so we can do uh, Wombat News Letter uh, March 2021. That's what you might save it as. Now you could go and just say that's fine. I'm, when I create April's newsletter I'm just going to make a duplicate of this file and then go in and start editing it, clearing it out, putting new things in. That's a, a really valid way of doing it and could save you a lot of time. Especially if your newsletter kind of looks the same from month to month or week to week. Um, but you could also create kind of a template with this. Now this kind of was already a template simply because you know I put sample text in here. Um, so I could maybe I would color it up a bit with saying, you know, sample headline, uh, sample headline, sample headline, that kind of thing. Um, and then if I save it as a template, then I would get uh, you know, this is a starting point. But what I could also do is do placeholder text. So I could select like this text here and I can make this as placeholder text. Uh, so I'm trying to remember where that is. Place. Yeah. So under format, format, advanced, the finest placeholder text. So I will do that. Let's let's save a copy. So I'm going to do save. And I'm going to hold the option key down, save as, and uh, I'll call this like working template. I'm just going to just save it there so I don't accidentally save over March's newsletter. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to Format, Advanced, Define as Placeholder Text. And then I'm going to go to Format, Advanced, and do the same thing but with the other text in here. So I'm going to do, um, let me clear out a lot of this so you can see the end of the article there. So I can do from here and I'll shift click here and I'll do. Format, Advanced, Save as Placeholder Text. And then this. I'll do Format, Advanced, Placeholder Text. That's uh, Control, Option, Command, T. So Control, Option, Command, T. Control, Option, Command, T. Same thing for here. And even here. So, you know, I've defined all of that. Um, I can continue to do placeholder text. Now, what I'm getting into a little bit is like if the newsletter is going to look exactly the same, and I'm just going to uh, replace everything, um, just replace the articles and stuff like that. Probably not the case here, as probably I'm going to be creating things from scratch every time. So, let's look at what happens if I save this as a template. So, what I'll do here uh, is I will save it as a template. Save as template right there under File and um, create a custom pages template and add to the template chooser. I could choose Save and save it as a file instead. Let's add it to the template chooser instead. So now you can see it appears here and I'll call this Wombat1. Great. So now I can close this document and let's go and create a new pages document. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here to the My Templates. And I've got Wombat 1. And now notice the placeholder text, like when I select it, it selects the entire thing. So I can select this and I could paste something new into it. But I could also, you know, in addition to placeholder text, I could just, you know, delete things, uh, move things around. Maybe this is going to be bigger next time. So like that. You know, but it does give me a way to start off. I could even do placeholder images. So for instance, I could have gone into this. Let's see if I control click on it. Will it give me format, advanced, uh, 
define its uh, media as placeholder. So if I do that, now this is a drag and drop zone. You can see that little indicator here. Um, so I could have done that and saved it as a template too. So that's a way to save it as a template. The cool thing about saving it as a template is all of your styles are here. So you've got the continued on, article summary, article body, article headline. They're all there saved in it. So uh, even if nothing else, even if you kind of clear this out and say let's create a template uh, that's just, you know, the top there. Clear all this out and just have it be the top and everything else is blank and I can clear this stuff out too. And that's what the template looks like, right? A starting point for me. It would still have the styles. So, you know, if I have to select a piece of text to show you, but you can go in here and you still see the styles. I could actually go in here and get rid of styles I don't need anymore. So for instance, uh, I'm not using this style. You know, delete it. Uh, delete it. Um, okay, so it's, it claims it's being used, but I'll just say article headline. Um, and you can go through all these styles and get rid of all of those that you're not using. Heck, we can even get rid of the body style and it's probably yeah, it's going to say replace it with what? And it'll say article body is the new body style. So it'll be the default stuff. So once I clear all this out, now when I save it as a template, I'll have a nice concise list of only the styles I'm using saved as part of the template as well as this stuff here at the top ready for me to change. I probably should have made like the date here and the issue number a drop zone. Matter of fact, I could have not drop zone a, a um, placeholder. I could even just put the number there and said format advanced. Uh, set as placeholder text and it's just that number there that's placeholder text not this. So you can still change it all but it's kind of a nicer way uh, to do it. Can I export it to HTML? No there is no um, export op export options. You've got a PDF, uh, Word, uh, EPUB uh, which wouldn't really work for page layout documents more for like novels and things like that. Um, and then rich text probably would break a lot of this. So um, basically this is all for exporting to PDF or exporting to um, or, you know to printing. Uh, you can't really create HTML uh, in pages. Um, I think it's just uh, you know it's, you have to use the right tool for that. So using a HTML you know kind of editor um, or what's the one that Adobe's got? Uh, anyway, you can use that and create uh, uh, create something using that or using a, a tool. Um, but normally you'd want something like this to look perfect for everybody so you actually have a PDF and then have the PDF as a download at your website. Can you create a newspaper? Well, I mean this is basically that, right? This is a newsletter, newspaper. What's the difference? Uh, what I would do, of course, you're probably going to have a larger uh, size than this but you could certainly go to Document uh, and then Go to the sizes here. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember now. You go to page setup. That's where it is. And paper size, and you can manage custom sizes. There might already be a size for whatever printer you've got or thing that you're, you know, if you're sending this off to a print shop to get printed on a newspaper, you can certainly define your own, you know, newspaper width and height with margins, and use that as the page size. For that, and then it would appear here instead of U.S. Letter. You would choose, you know, my newspaper size or whatever. But I should point out that there are much more advanced apps for creating things like newspapers. I mean, if it's going to be a real newspaper, you know, you would use uh, Adobe InDesign, Quark Express, um, things like that. There's even some tools in the Mac App Store. I think uh, Affinity has a publisher tool too, um, and there's a few others. Would you still be able to customize sections, titles? You should be able to customize everything even after creating a template. Uh, so styles only apply to the current document which is why it's important to um, create it. If you're going to be creating some custom styles, create those styles um, and either start by duplicating the document you had before or create a template that has those styles in them. So when you go to create a new pages document you always start with a template. Always. Even if the template is blank, that's still a template. If I start with a blank template, it may look like it's empty, but look at that. There's a bunch of styles there. That's part of the blank template. So you create your own template with your own styles in it if you're going to be reusing those styles. 
Now you can go and um, you know, let's go back and uh, open up the Wombat newsletter. You can, you know, this is uh, article summary here. Um, I believe if I create a new document, and there is no article summary here because that was special. But if I paste it in, uh, nope, it won't be included. So you can see you can't just copy and paste there. You've got to basically create a template if you want to be reusing those styles or start from using an old document. And that I think wraps it up unless anybody else has some other questions. Um, a, I think uh, in general you, you know, it's a good start for things and you need to just basically build on uh, you know, what I've got here. There are tons of other tools. I've just shown you the basic stuff so hopefully to get you started. I would say that if you're going to use Pages to create a newsletter or you've never done it before, do what I just did which is to create an example newsletter. Just play around with it. So you know, if it's like your task Monday to build a newsletter by the end of the day don't do it Monday. Do it you know, the week before. Create a sample newsletter. Play around with it. Get to know everything so then you're ready to start with a fresh a new document on Monday. Maybe you create your template even from that example that you create to save yourself time. But you know, don't you know, on a deadline learn this stuff. Learn this stuff by doing what I just did. That's exactly what I would do. If somebody said we need you to create a newsletter every week the first thing I would do is create an example newsletter. Work out everything I need to do. Maybe create a template from it. And then I would go and create the first newsletter. So um, <clears throat> so that's about it. Um, if you have any questions you can still add them as you know, this will be up on YouTube. You can add them as questions to the comments there and I'll be looking in on those uh, to answer them for you. Um, but uh, you know, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time this is Gary with MacMost.